Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV news video. In this one we're going to be tackling the concept of normal and savage mode Alexander and how it changed from Coil where it was just a single difficulty, minus of course the second Coil of Bahamut, where they tested a savage difficulty to see how it would do. Now this interview comes out of the Mosu-chan blog. Uh, the interview is in Japanese, so thank you to 11 Mile for translating it here in the Reddit section. Apologies in advance for my not best looking demeanor. Hair's a little bit out of place. I'm a bit, a bit congested. It's, it's early in the morning, so forgive me for that one. So the interview mostly just discusses the key point, which I'm going to say right here without reading through it. They are keeping normal and savage mode as how they are going to handle the 4.0 raids. It is still going to be two difficulties in the expansion. That being said, they do discuss a lot of what their information suggested from Binding Coil, what their information suggests now, changes that they're going to be making in 3.4, and the overall difficulty of Savage and, Nor and uh, Normal going into 4.0. The biggest thing that they're having trouble with here is ensuring that they can motivate players to complete Savage without having to make them feel like they are forced to do it. It's a very fine line to walk when you want to do something like that. So they're looking into other means, other things that they could possibly do in order to help motivate people that aren't just, hey, here's extra story or something like that. Apparently, one of the original plans was that they were going to make normal mode, just the first two floors, and then three and four was going to be savage, and they were going to be what-if scenarios, but they said that this was just like a, when they were going through the original idea of what normal and savage were going to be. Those were just examples of some ideas that floated around the room, not something that was ever ground in reality and they were planning on doing. Uh, so then there's a lot of talk about how Alexander the Creator is going to be, uh, since it's going to be the conclusion of Alexander, they want to make sure that it's a very flashy raid, that it's something that people uh, are impressed by and it doesn't have the same boring aesthetic, and I will use that word, when it comes to the two arms that Alexander had. So that is another big thing that we're going to see here. Another thing that we're going to be seeing is a uh, Normal and Savage, while they're going to exist in 4.0, they said they haven't really finalized what their difficulties will actually be. So, for all we know, Normal could be quite a bit harder, or Savage could be quite a bit easier. Uh, I think that they understand that one of the biggest issues with just having two difficulties is that it's sort of the opposite problem that there was with Coil. With Coil, there was one difficulty. People who wanted a greater challenge just didn't get it. A minus second Coil Savage, which a lot of people weren't motivated to do, another factor here, because there was no loot, there was nothing at all, it was just for bragging rights. And then you had people who struggled with normal Coil, and so they wanted a story mode. And so we got the story mode, and we got the harder difficulty, but the in-between where Coil used to sit was basically just outright destroyed. And that's always been the biggest issue, I feel at least, with the double difficulty system that we have right here. For me, it's not that Savage Gear looks the same as normal. For me, it's not that it's the same bosses. For me, it's just that it doesn't accommodate, it doesn't properly segue players into the raid scene. If you want them to do normal to do if you don't want them to do normal to do hard than to do savage, I get that. I don't like the idea of repeating a boss three times in a row, especially if it's part of the gearing process. But at least there's a stepping stone into the actual raid scene. Right now, if you pretty much don't have experience in Savage, whoever's taking you into a group or anyone who's trying to create a group with people who have no experience is taking a full-on gamble. Because the Ability to complete an extreme primal does not mean you are ready for savage. Essentially, and essentially, that's your only stepping stone into savage rating right now. Whereas, if there were three difficulties, you had normal story mode. Okay, whatever, it's Passover. Release normal and story mode, or release release story mode is like the super easy difficulty, and normal mode is kind of like what was the near coil equivalent before. And all of a sudden, players have this entry level raid, this normal mode entry level raid, where the mechanics are definitely more punishing. Uh, Things start to get a little bit more interesting in terms of what they can do with their jobs, how they have to look at their jobs. They start working on active rotation as opposed to dummy rotation, which is so little effect. And the biggest thing is by the time you've cleared all of normal mode, you feel like, hey, I can jump into Savage next. Like, that is my next step. And there is that sort of feeling like I have to jump into Savage next. But it's better than not having a stepping stone into Savage rating at all. I hope that at some point they are given the resources to do three difficulties because it seems like they are dedicated to the system. So if they are dedicated to it, I want it to be done properly. 
I don't have an issue getting into Savage Raid groups, but that's only because I've been around the raiding scene for a long time. I want you guys, especially those of you who watch the channel like, oh, I'm new to Final Fantasy XIV, I want you guys to have an easier time of getting into that raid scene, and I do not feel like the game currently gives you the right tools to do that. Uh, there are other aspects of the interview here. Uh, for example, they discussed the auto attack changes that we discussed in the last live letter. Um, parry will not trigger unless you took damage from the front. That's an important thing. You can't be a tank and turned around and parry. Uh, even if you're auto attacking, you st uh, you still need to make sure you're facing the target in order to properly parry them. That goes the same for raw intuition. Don't forget that, warriors. Um, and then, of course, they uh, the, the auto attack distance is still going to be the same pretty much. Uh, they also talked about the rising event and how it basically teased Samurai. And Yoshi P was like, that was never supposed to be confirmation of the job, but everyone took it so definitively. Um, but they're, they'll, they'll just see, they just clarified it was more like a punchline that his character had back then. So they basically can't say anything about new jobs or anything like that they just they just can't say anything yet and they won't until the uh until the north american fan festival on october 14th during the opening keynote if they decide to stay it there at all another thing is the mannequin system which is the idea of you put a mannequin in a house and you can outfit it with gear you can use it as storage for your gear you could use it as uh, just display if you want to whatever the functionality it is or both technically is the best combination of things that it can do uh, they said they've shelved it for the moment but they've already they already have the specifications of what they need to do uh, they just said due to cost problems they're focusing on things like the aquarium and the apartment system they want to make sure that more people have houses and that they have other less technical things that they can add to housing uh, while they're actually ensuring that there are a ton more houses or a ton more um, housing available to the player base, uh, that getting this mannequin system is not as high priority as ensuring that there are more and more places that people can call their home. Uh, what are some other things here? The Grand Company Summoning System, or the Grand Summoning System as it's called here. For those who don't remember, back before Realm Reborn launched, we were told that there was a piece of content that was being worked on where Essentially, a primal would be summoned out in the world, one person from a free company would get the ability to summon this thing, and when they did it, like the sky would change colors, and there would be all this changes to the weather, and, and just a bunch of things would go crazy, and you could essentially use it to completely annihilate an enemy, uh, whether that was a raid boss, or that was just a fate, who the hell knows. And it never really made sense, it doesn't make sense to us now, even just hearing that, like how cheesy that sounds, like, oh, I, I world first at 8 Savage with the Ifrit summoning thing, it's like, who cares, right? Um, so they said that it's actually not done, like they haven't given up on it, but it's, again, just like the other thing, shelved. I, I just, personally, it seems like culturally, they just don't want to say they're not doing something. <laughs> so they say, no, nah, you know, it's shelved, we'll work on it later. Uh, you know, it's still, in the, it's still in our minds, we just have more important things. I, to me, that makes me feel like they're never going to actually finish it. I know a lot of people who, over the course of these interviews, have stated that's a very cultural thing in Japan to never just flat out say, no, I'm not doing that, to kind of say it in a more polite, roundabout way. So personally i've given up on the grand company or the uh, grand summoning system as it's called here but we'll see what happens ever in the future probably won't uh let's see one last question will legacy equipments be erased in the future um i guess that i guess that makes sense like there are some equipment that still survived a realm uh the transformation to a realm reborn i still have some of this quote-unquote legacy in for uh, this this legacy gear that they're talking about, one of which I remember was uh, has a really fond memory of me from back when I very first when I was very beginning 1.0, fond memory and one in that th that was why the sentence came out so jumbled is because I tried to say something nice about 1.0. Never mind, <clears throat> I'm gonna be moving on right here. But anyway, that's the entirety of the interview as you can see. Biggest thing to take away is the normal and savage text. Uh, I'm really hoping for some more streamlined. Uh, experience into raiding and not so much of a jump like we have now. If that means that normal has to progressively work up to be a bit harder and that savage has to start a little easier, I'm perfectly okay with that. The problem is with making normal harder is the duty finder still needs to be able to complete it. It's there so people can experience the story. So I think something along the lines of like Nidhogg difficulty would be, uh, Nidhogg normal difficulty would be a nice place to put this going forward. Generally the normal mode primals have been a bit harder since 3.2, so uh, Sephiroth and Nidhogg both definitely better fights than I feel came with 3.1 and uh, 3.0.
Do we even get a normal mode Primal in 3.1? We just got Thornton, I feel like. Thornton Extreme. Yeah, I think that's all we got. And that was a really, really good fight. So I don't know. I uh, there's, there's a lot of different paths they could take. I'm hoping to hear more about this soon, especially with the North American Fan Festival kind of just being like six weeks away. So anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys think <clears throat> of the normal mode versus Savage Alexander debate that is going on over here on Reddit that's going on pretty much all the time within the Final Fantasy XIV community. Uh, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And remember, I will be away at PAX West uh, for this entire weekend. If you're going to be there, I'm doing a separate announcement video right after I finish recording this one, so that way you can know all the goodies and the stream schedule changes and all that good stuff. But anyway, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next video, and until then, take care.